All right, I am with our guest this week, somebody I am very excited to talk to. Hasn't been around the poker world for a little while, but was a big name uh, in the poker boom era, if you will. A man after my own heart because he used to be poker media, the poker editor for Inside Edge magazine, went on to win a WSOP bracelet, an EPT title, and a World Poker Tour title. Uh, Poker's Triple Crown, or Grand Slam, as they call it, was just the second person to do so behind Gavin Griffin. Welcome to the Poker News Podcast, Mr. Roland DeWolf. So, that's a nice intro. It's good to, good to be here. It's, uh, it's exciting. You surfaced at the World Poker Tour Seminole Hard Rock Showdown down there in South Florida. And we were saying off the air, it's your first tournament in quite some time. Yeah, I, I mean, literally, I think the last proper tournament I played was like the one drop in 2012. So what's that, nine years? Um, uh, uh, actually, there may, have been, there may have been like a, a very brief main event appear, appearance a few years ago but, uh, that I actually forgot about. Um, right. I was just ran, randomly in Vegas. But, but uh, yeah, um, I've uh, dropped out of the tournament scene. Even that one drop was a couple of years after I last played. So... Yeah, it's uh, it was fun. I was uh, happened to be in Florida, happened to be there. That, that someone pointed out that there was a tournament there, um, and there were three of us who went. My friend uh, Peter Gould, who used to be around the poker scene, he made a few WSOP, and it's actually quite a cool story. And another, another guy, our friend uh, David, he um, he um, lives in Miami. He's eighty-one years old, and he'd never played a, a poker tournament before. Wow! So, so I, I gave him like a few lessons. Uh, and uh, maybe three hours of, of tutoring, um, put him, sat him down in front of uh, the World Poker Tour and uh, Mike Sexton and, and uh, Vince on TV, and uh, he made day two, which was amazing. I mean, he did go into he did uh, he did go in three hands before the end of day one. That's when he brought in no, like a lot two hours before maybe, but uh, it was great. That was it was a great it was a great. Um, I actually enjoyed it. Like um, in my head, like poker tournaments have like lost some of the things that I thought made them fun but uh that was actually fun so I don't know if that was uh, a misappropriation on my part or just you know after the pandemic a lot of people are coming out you know um sure. and, and in Florida probably is always quite a fun place to play there weren't like pros on on the tables really or they might have been pros but they at least didn't seem like super pros they weren't like tanking or you know there was kind of chat even i quite like the plexiglass by the way i like having my own i like I quite like having my own little i'm sure someone said that before but i quite like having my own little area just yeah, to chill there are no people people's... yeah there are people who definitely like that uh, net, that barrier so they don't have to you know be an asshole and ignore people they have an excuse so to speak i i like them myself i like to have my little area so how did you do in the tournament uh i made day two um I uh, I think I made I think I made a mistake, but then I asked someone who's a lot better at poker than me, and he said it was a standard spot. But uh, kind of had a good read that I should have folded, and just didn't feel like it. So um, it, 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 you're you're never very deep in these things. I think like um, Matt Savage has made a, quite a good tournament, but you're never that deep. So you're only kind of one or two big you know hands away from you know it's a right. minefield, um, and there's so many players. But no, I was pleased. Uh, I was pleased with how I kind of picked it up and I was kind of most pleased that I enjoyed it, which was, uh, which was what it was about really. It's just a, a recreational thing to go and uh, go and play. And I was really, uh, it's really quite fun. Um, that was the most important thing. I think I'll ask the question that's on everybody's mind then. If uh, you know, you haven't been playing a lot of poker, what, what have you been doing? What's your life like these days? So I, I live in, that's a good question. Um, I live in London and um me and my brother have uh, uh, kind of run the, the family business. So, which is, uh, we have a recording studio in London, which is um, hired out to uh, singers and uh, bands and stuff like that. And we have um, some property and we have um, some other companies. So, you know, he's the, he's the linchpin, but I, I, I give, uh, give my advice. And I've also um, done a lot of traveling and um, done a lot of different, uh, you know, hobbies that I've followed. So it's kind of a, a life of uh, life of leisure. I still, I, like, I go and follow a lot of sports. Obviously the last 18 months has been different, but, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like I've um, become a crypto wizard, um, although that's a space that I've explored a bit. 
um, and we'll continue to get into. But yeah, it's um, it was a uh, it was a it was a nice thing. I mean, I used to play quite a lot of cash games in London after I stopped playing tournaments, and I did that for a few years. So I was still playing poker. I just wasn't playing as much. But I kind of over the over the years, I just kind of felt like tournaments definitely I didn't want to travel like I'd, I'd done that thing it's an amazing thing to do in your 20 in your you know 20s early 30s but you know it's grueling that stuff like it's it's a, it's it's you know I have ultimate respect for the guys you know like Eric Seidel or whoever who can just do that but you know they're, they're like lifers they're in for life um and they're amazing that they, that they can find that like motivation to keep going and Daniel and whoever but um you know that was an exhausting life and then the cash games I, I, I did enjoy them. I do enjoy them. It's not like I never play. I'll play once in a while, um, but it has to be like really fun. So I'm looking to play with people I know who I know who are fun. And like, I, I kind of want to be in a really good game. Um, I don't really want people who are, you know, really solid wizards. Sure. Like, in, and it just like have a laugh and stuff. And that's another thing that's really died in the last, you know, in the last 18 months due to, you know, what's been going on in the world. It's not the... Um, it's not the biggest deal, but um, yeah, so it's not like there's no poker, but there's no poker on TV or whatever. Right. Um, and, I, I, and I kind of feel that, um, you know, everything has its lifespan and my lifespan in poker was, um, you know, it was not, it was not going to be for, you know, I wasn't going to be a Seidel, you know, battling away into my 80s or however old he is. Um, he's probably a bit younger, like mid 70s. <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually had I had, uh, I had dinner with uh, Eric at the uh, at, in the Florida uh, Florida uh, yeah the WPT one, yeah <laughs> definitely one one of my one of my poker heroes uh, going all the way back to rounders yeah for for sure a lot of people's and he, yeah his his longevity I mean I think it's incredible he had you know he was in the Poker Hall of Fame and then he had his, the best years of his career which speaks volumes. You know, he had a Poker Hall of Fame worthy career, got in and then still went on to crush it, which is, which is incredible. Um, and, but like I you think said- I, he, what's, what's his um, lifetime like tournament is so much now, but I still think that there's this, he would have made more money if he'd have just like last four years just done OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Eric Seidel OnlyFans, I, I can only, <laughs> only imagine that. So let me ask you with the poker, was there, you know, you said you stopped playing tournaments, you played a little bit of cash games, and then did it just kind of fade out where you weren't playing a lot and other things took priority in your life? Or did there come a point in your life where you kind of became disenfranchised with poker and burnt out on it and there made a conscious was, decision? No, absolutely. There was, a, there was like a couple, a couple of years where I just didn't want to go near a poker table. Like, you know, I just didn't have the, I guess I was like, I was doing a lot of sports gambling in that in that time and um i would say like other other forms of gambling and trading and whatever and and i just wasn't getting the i didn't have the patience to sit there um even in a good game like i would be always like looking for something to bet on or looking for this i mean that was always kind of my personality but it got to the point where like i just didn't have the focus or concentration to sit at a poker table i kind of lost the love for it um yeah just burn out i guess and yeah. um uh, you know, just a, a, a couple of other things going on, like family life and stuff that just like took priority. And, um, but after a while, I, um, you know, I played it in, in, a, in, a, in a few small games and then like kind of the old network that I used to play with kind of reformed a bit. And, and then we played, you know, when the right people were in town, we would play, I guess, um, you know, every two or three months, we would have a couple of games, two or three, four games. And, and it was really fun. Um, and that hasn't happened again since uh, since the pandemic. But um, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not done with poker. Like poker is an amazing game, and like I'm super grateful for everything in it. Um, but uh, yeah, there's two. I guess there's two. It's well, it's two main things. Firstly, the where I was in, in my life and the things that I've done, um, and what I, what I wanted to do. Uh, that's that's one reason. Right. Second, and second, I think that the game has did change somewhat in terms of you know obviously like your poker news so you you know and you're going to be you know very pro poker but like it, it's not it's not a secret that you know it it, it it kind of the entertainment factor um combined with it not being the boom anymore um 
made it more difficult for the you know the industry and the casual fan to really love it um i guess that was the same for the players you like like you know the the original guard of poker players were you know people who had had like a lot of life experience they were super sure. fun and um then the you know the next generation a bit less because they'd had less life experience had been more and you know fair play to those guys amazing like people who put like unbelievable work in and and deserve all the success they get but it's not quite the same as like watching someone uh, or, you know watching the characters like if i want to watch if i want to watch poker i'm going to watch like i like go and watch the first series of high stakes poker or mm-hmm. you know those are like so you know so 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 amazing like that that sort of thing and i think that's the challenge for poker it's in a lot of sports like we have sports in the uk which i think is quite similar like snooker um some of the get darts they were like the pub games and and people who were in it were real characters like going back 10 20 30 years but in the modern you need you know because there's money in it people are so dedicated mm-hmm. uh, and, and so focused and stuff so like you know um it's it's fun to watch um the main event coverage on the, of the wsop because you have all these stories you know one year there's a darwin moon or like you know sometimes you know there's always something like going on there because of the the numbers but um if you watch like, one of the, these high rollers i think they're you know the, the standard of poker is amazing but for me that's not it's, it's, a, it's more about narrative. Yeah, and I think that's a great point in, in the point of life experience and how that lends itself to being a character in poker in these other sports that you, that you mentioned. And yeah, we're not seeing that a lot these days because it is the young up and coming 21 year olds or whatever, what have you who learned with solvers. And yeah, I think you make a great point. I can't disagree with it. So it's so competitive. You, you almost can't afford to be that character. Like, and there's no... There's no, there's no, almost no, um, there's no real upside. I mean, there are, you know, people can do Twitch and streaming and stuff, but there's no super upside to being, you know, a character. You're not like getting a massive poker sponsorship because you're, you know, you're funny or you're, right. um, yeah, you know, that's not what's drawing people in. Um, you know, the money to be made is, um, is through being really, really good. And it's so competitive that, you, you know, it, it, it doesn't lend itself to creation of, um, entertainment for the for the casual fan I think now there are stories in poker and there are still like smaller tournaments and stuff like that and and, and there are ways where it's going to be you know really entertaining but I think it, it you know it's it's it just and also it doesn't have the money flowing through it you know like it used to yeah, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean it can't change it doesn't mean it can't come again but yeah and uh, it it's tough, you know, it's a, it's definitely a changing industry. You know, I got in the poker industry around 2010, which is when you had your last tournament cash and maybe <laughs> kind of started exiting the, uh, the poker scene, but you were there in the early days, you know, at the boom, you, I went over your resume, but just real quick, you know, winning the triple crown, winning a WSOP and EPT, a WPT title, uh, you finished third in the 2006 WPT 25 K championship. Uh, just really impressive resume. Do you have something that sticks out for you as your most proud poker accomplishment? Um, well, I, I, I guess what no one really understood, I'll answer the question, but what no one really understood is how much variance there was all in all of these things. You know, you used to go and win one WPT and you're on the front cover of a card player magazine and then you're, you know, that happened, that happened with like, you know, 10, 15 people, you know, you're, you're right place, right time. Um, in terms of uh, poker resume, I don't know. I, I was quite proud of the bracelet because I won it in a game I hadn't, I had never played. Basically, maybe I played like one session total. Um, so obviously, you need insane luck. And I remember the guy who uh, three-handed it was Scott Clemens mm-hmm. when I won the bracelet, and he was like the best uh, high-low split player um, that there was. Basically, so so like, but I, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. Like I, I played okay, and I understood tournaments, but. You know, it's just uh, it's so it's so much luck. Yeah. Um, so for for those that don't know, that was the 2009 WSOP event number 27, five thousand dollar pot limit Omaha high low eight or better. Uh, I gotta ask, where is the bracelet nowadays? Do you do you have it stored away? Did you put yeah, it on no, display? It's, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's with um, it's with my other valuables. Um, I, I don't keep it at my house, but uh, it's um, it's somewhere where I can see it. Um, I having, uh, just had my apartment in London broken into while I've been away. I've been away for five months. And just after I left, uh, the UK got shut down, so I haven't been back. 
but uh, I don't keep it where people can, can break it. But that's, it's, it's an amazing thing to win a bracelet um, uh, and a triple crown, like all of it was just, uh, it's just a dream really. Like you don't, you do realize, but less so at the time, like how lucky you are and how much you're like living the dream and especially doing it all in the time when it, it really kind of mattered to win those things. Like now, I, I, I don't know, like I'm not really au fait with like the tournament scene, but you know, it seems like they have these huge monster high rollers and then you know you have some 10ks but winning a winning a, a wpt now i don't think is the same has anywhere near the same cachet as it did in the early days or an ept sure even a even a bracelet it just i mean i'm not trying to do poker down because i think poker is amazing i think that um you know the way the game's gone is is so impressive um and it's still got like great characters in it but i just you know, and I, I don't want to be like harking back as if like the old times were better and like now it's it's not good because I, I just don't know enough. Um, but like that kind of the idea that I got a little bit into my head that like tournaments are boring and like you sit next to these guys, you know how like you sure. hear, I don't want, I don't want to be sounding like the old guy ranting yeah. because that's really not, but you know, like all of those things that like they, you know, shot clock is a great idea. Like sunglasses are terrible for, t for, for tournaments. Like all, all um, so many things, so many, you know, show your face, like all of these, all of these things. Um, well, I think what, what your, your thoughts are, are very valuable. I mean, you've been around the industry for a long time. I said it earlier, you were a former editor of the Inside Edge magazine. So I was curious as somebody who works in poker media, were you a poker player who got into poker media or were you like a fan who got into poker media who then turned into, you know, a very accomplished poker player? I guess I was a gambler who, who wanted to be a journalist. And um, when I got there, no one really knew anything about poker and I knew a bit. So I kind of threw myself into that. And once I once that door was open, then I wanted to be a player and, sure. you know, was putting my efforts into that. And it, it was only over a short period of time that I went from, uh, you know, editing a magazine to being on the cover, really, I guess. <laughs> but, it, it was it was uh, it was uh, definitely not something that I sat so I hadn't really played much before I started uh, thing. But again, it, it, you didn't need to be good then. That was that, that was the thing. You just needed to be a bit better than everything else. Everywhere, or you know, a bit better than your competitors. You didn't. It wasn't like uh, like I, I even look back to how I played then, and I haven't played for years. But I can tell like all the mistakes I used to like. I, I reckon I probably had at least one of those titles without really knowing what position it was. <laughs> yeah. It is quite amazing. I remember back to that era, you know, 2006, seven, eight ish. Um, it really was like, if you sat down at a table, there was maybe two people who knew what they were really doing. It usually wasn't a matter of if you were going to win, it was how much. And now today it's pretty much everybody knows what they're doing at the table. To some extent, you might get lucky and have one or two uh, players at the table who are, you know, not up to par, we'll say. Um, the game's changed a lot. Do you think that, uh, you know, based upon your experience in, in Florida and, you know, the little bit you have dabbled in poker recently, that you could, if you wanted to, you know, dive back in and really be competitive in today's today's uh, industry? Well, I think that I probably had a plus, I was probably plus equity in that tournament, but I think that tournament is probably an outlier. Sure. Um, I, I think that... Um, I could probably do, you know, I'd probably do okay. Like if I went to a series and like sat down and played every event, I'd say, I think that I probably, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like butchered um, apart from maybe in the high rollers, but you know, I, I'd only be, the, the level I'd be able to, to win at is, is, would be pretty low. Um, like you say, like when you're spoiled in the poker boom and everyone is bad, except maybe one or two players, it, it's so, it becomes so much less appealing to like, you know, if you started in 2010, you, all you've known is like, everyone kind of knows what they're doing. And that's fine, like you expect that and you're supposed to be there. But like, when you're a bit more spoiled and you've played in like amazing games and, and you know, really with people just giving away money and you were always used to winning, um, it, it becomes less appealing. So it's like you, the deep, deep love for poker that, that people have, or, or, or they have, you know, they, the, the people who stay, stay through it or they're, you know, um, or they're so good or their brand is so strong, you know you, you you respect that um which is why i said like sidel or daniel or um you know people who are still playing from from back in the day um but no I got, against anyone good i'm i'm i mean you know i've got no shot basically sure. 
Do you think uh, we will see you at all in the poker world? You maybe at a World Series of Poker this fall or or anywhere else, or do you think this you know WPT what? Florida was a one off? I, I tell you one thing they should have done it years ago, and I know why they didn't, but like putting that World Series in September is so great. Um, like September, October is like the nicest time of the year in Vegas. Uh, June is like disgusting there. Yeah. And yeah, it's so it's so um, wrong for like the poker community to have to have had that for years to like be put into the worst months, so, like so unpleasant. Um, and, um, you know, to go in September, October, yeah, I could easily go and like play a couple of events or, or, or be, I'd probably be in Vegas around that time, you know, Raiders game, I'd be interested mm -hmm. to go to. Um, just like that time of year, um, th there's all sorts going on out there at that time. So yeah, I, I you know, if if, being, if I'm being allowed to travel back in, because the only reason I was able to get into the States was because I was, you know, in Caribbean first. So I, I wasn't coming from the UK where they've got a block on it. But yeah, I'd love to come and play a couple of events. I kind of enjoyed the Florida WPT much more than I thought I would. Um, it was quite fun. Um, I think that um, I spoke to Matt Savage and it was nice to see him. And he was saying like how, you know, they're, they're, they don't make it super deep at the beginning, which is good, which is good for these tournaments because, you know, often you find like it's really slow in the early, early rounds when you're, you know, you're, you're not, uh, you're not achieving much, but this was kind of a bit more, every, 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 level, every level was quite meaningful. No, yeah, and I, I enjoyed it. Maybe, maybe Florida is the new, uh, <laughs> the, the new poker tournaments. I don't know, like where, where, you know, I, I'd imagine that everywhere is quite, a three thousand dollar buy-in at this time. I'm sure all three thousands are always quite fun to play. Um, yeah, I mean, they're saying right now, you know, South Florida in the seminal, those guys put on great events, but Florida as a whole is is poker's hot spot right now. Texas is up and coming right behind them, and those are generally right now regarded as the two places to be for poker. Yeah, I, I think that um, you know, going back to your earlier point, the the the, the level of of like three k buy-ins. Um, are, is very accessible to, to, to many people mm -hmm. and the standard of because of that the standard of it, it's not going to be too hard and because of the formats of the, of the tournaments the edge is not going to be that great for the for the good players so you know it's it's really quite a nice event where um you're going to get a mixture of of, of results um and you know also like the really good players aren't, aren't, aren't going to be interested so it's kind but of like you've got two Kind of like you're going to get getting two sort of separate things in poker now. You have sure. the super high, super high roller orbit, and then you have the you know the, for everyone else, and that that's sort of kind of fine. Um, and I think that, that that's the way forward. And I, and I you know I I, I love uh, I still I managed to catch some of the new series of high stakes poker on on Go. Right. I was interested. I saw the Helmuth. Uh, <laughs> the Doug, Doug Polk and you know, where he. Where was it? Where uh, Doug Polk? What did he? He folded the the second nut straight. That. that was amazing. Yeah, I sent that to side. That was just, that's just a phenomenal performance. That was very fun. And I, I watched. Uh, I was in. Uh, I was in Vegas and uh, just uh, sitting in the room, and it came on uh, the TV in the afternoon. Uh, Helmuth and an Antonio playing heads up. <laughs> you're uh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're missing out on some fun games. Some fun I matches. Was, uh, that was uh, that was I, ha I hadn't spoken to Antonio in a long time, and I just sent him a message saying, <laughs> a screen grab and a message saying, "I feel your pain." He <laughs> just replied saying, "Highest level." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and then uh, yeah, and then Daniel and Phil are going at it again next month. Yeah, it should uh, it should be good. I, I would like to see you maybe at some point get get back in those streets and battle, whether it's uh, on high stakes poker, maybe a poker after dark or something on poker go. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I speak to, I speak I speak to Jennifer Tilly and she's always saying like come over and play uh, poker after dark with us. So maybe uh, maybe that'd be fun. We can have a. Uh, I sometimes uh, I sometimes even catch Mike Madison's podcast if we're allowed to mention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. podcast. Because is that is that a rival? That's podcast? fine. Yeah, that, it, yeah. We're we're always happy to support Mike in uh, in his crazy ventures sometimes. But no, his yeah. show's good. His videos are good. I think uh, I I'd be very excited to to see you back. You know, battling in the poker streets, and uh, you know, you are well, you were one of the biggest names in the of uh, you know the poker boom era, if you will. Like I said, winning the triple crown, second only uh, person to ever do it. Others have done it since, but back then, like you said, it didn't. Right now, it doesn't have the same panache. Back then, it was 
quite the big deal. And, uh, you know, it was a real pleasure for me to get you on the show here to catch up with you. I think the listeners are really going to enjoy learning what you've been up to. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. That's great. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, maybe another time soon. <laughs>